So welcome everybody. If you're watching this video, you probably searched for the search terms Ashley Tarjan and either you've had a hair transplant there or you're looking to have one there. So I feel that this video might be really useful because there is a lot of stuff out there about Ashley Tarjan. But I don't think anybody's really captured what those kind of people are doing over there. So I'm going to give you a bit of background. I went to Ashley Tarjan in 2018. I was probably a Norwood 5 or a Norwood 6, started bowling quite early and over time I just started, the idea of a hair transplant obviously became more normalised, people all over the world were getting them, you see famous people getting them and I knew a couple of people who went, who went and got one and especially with regards to Turkey, people were going left, right and centre to Turkey and it was just the thing, you go to Turkey, you get your hair transplant. So for me it was quite it was a normal step. I thought, you know what? Let me go to Turkey. A friend, a family friend actually recommended Asli Tarjan. So I thought, all right, there's a good review. And then I went to their Instagram, did about one day of research. And they had some really good befores and afters on their, on their Instagram page. You saw people with fresh hair transplants. The work looked good. They posted before and afters. They looked good. So I thought, you know what? How can they have this amount of positive results? And yeah, I trust them basically. So at that time I was quite, it was very impulsive, the decision I made. I literally did one day of research. I messaged them and I had booked my transplant for about three weeks time. So to book it, all you got to do, you got to speak to a guy on WhatsApp who can barely speak English and he will get you booked in for that transplant. You give him the day that you're going to arrive to Turkey and they take care of the rest. You send them a couple of photos. So that should have been red flag number one because most reputable clinics will not just take on somebody for a hair transplant without having a proper consultation first. And by consultation, that doesn't just mean a couple of pictures. You've got to speak to the doctor, speak to the surgeon. So Ashley Tarjan is obviously quite famous on social media. But Asli Tarjan herself, the woman, she's not a doctor, she's not a surgeon, but she's merely made a business brand. She's made a brand out of Asli Tarjan and they've got a real big social media presence. So when you're researching for a transplant, that should be consideration number two. Who is the doctor? So Asli Tarjan's not a doctor. She's not doing no transplants. You don't know who the doctors are at Asli Tarjan. We don't even know if there are doctors at Asli Tarjan. So that's number two. That should have been the red flag. Like who's doing my my surgery? But then again, at that time, I wasn't clued up. I didn't research properly. I was impulsive. But lessons learned. You don't rush into a decision like that without really, really doing your homework on who these people are and what kind of result they're going to give you. Who, who are the surgeons? What is their real track record? And by track record, I don't mean what they posted on their Instagram. I mean, have people posted about them online? Do you know people in person who've had a result by them? Are there real patient testimonials, not fake social media ones or cherry picked ones? So, um, so yeah, so I booked three weeks time, booked my ticket, cheap ticket to Turkey. They told me it would be, I think, around 2,200 euros at that time. So I booked it and I was very happy. I was very excited. I wanted to do it. So I got to Turkey. First thing that happens is they pick you up from the airport. And you think, all right, cool. They take you straight to the clinic. Like you've just come off a flight. They take you straight to the clinic. All right, no problem. It was me and about five other guys. And incidentally, one was, uh, he was a boxer from America who's fought a couple of, one or two big names. I think he fought Pauli Malinaji. So it was quite interesting talking to him. Um, so we went straight to the clinic, five of us there, and they gave us each a consultation. Consultation is about 10 minutes long. They look at your hair on their machine. It's not a doctor again. I don't know who these people were, to be fair, yeah? They come in, they look at your hair, and they, they stroke your hair. Oh, amazing hair. You have very good hair. And they draw you a hairline, and they tell you, are you happy with this? And that's it. A real consultation, they actually ask questions they discuss what will happen in the transplant what the plan is 
they tell you in detail exactly what they're going to do. These people don't tell you anything in detail. They just tell you, oh, you have great hair and we're going to give you maximum graft. That's their famous phrase over there in in Turkey, especially at these kind of clinics. Oh, we take maximum grafts. Now, on paper, that sounds great. You want maximum hair. Everybody wants maximum hair. But if you take maximum grafts, you're not leaving anything for the future in case you need another hair transplant because hair will keep receding and will keep thinning over time. And furthermore, you could over harvest if you do it all in one go and you don't do it in the right way. So I, I was sold. I wanted maximum graft. Oh, 5,000 graft. They told me 5,000. I was very happy. I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to get my hair covered up properly and it's all going to be good. But that was the biggest mistake I made because like I said, I didn't do my research. So I didn't know that maximum grafts wasn't necessarily a good thing. And uh, actually, let me go back. Ashley Tarjan herself did come into the room and I specifically told her, look, I need it to be a natural looking result. I don't want any scars on my donor area or anything like that. Donor area is the back of the head. She said, yes, yes, yes. She can't speak English. So somebody was translating. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, we use small punch. And uh, yeah, I was reassured and I thought, all right, this is going to happen. Now, I think they drew blood from me. And again, no hygiene, nothing looks sterile, very unprofessional. Um, the way they do things over there in that clinic, like I'm surprised I didn't catch something from uh, from when they took blood. They took blood. I don't even think they did like any health questionnaire or anything like that, like any reputable clinic would do. And that's it. I was booked in and I was, they took me back to the hotel and they told me to come in the next day. They will pick me up the next day and we'll go and we'd have the transplant. So yeah, so their, their hotel was decent. It was in a bit of a dry area, but it was decent. The one that they took us to, but yeah, they took me to the hotel. Next day, had a, next day came in uh, early in the morning and they took me and five other guys. So when you see that there's five other guys with you, and when I went to the clinic as well, there were about seven, eight guys just sitting around probably waiting for treatment or whatever it is. That's what you call a hair mill. That's what's known as a hair mill. So a hair mill is where they're just trying to get as much turnover as possible. They're trying to get people in, do their transplant and get them out. That is a really bad sign. Good clinics do one patient a day. Like solid, real hair transplant clinics do one patient a day. They don't have five or six patients a day that they're waiting to operate on. They have one patient. They give their full attention to that person. And that is how a professional clinic runs. So this is obviously a very large scale operation. They're operating on scale here. They want to get as many numbers as possible. Result might be garbage. Result might turn out decent. Who knows? They don't care. They just want you in and out. So uh, yeah, that's probably red flag. Well, definitely red flag number three that I didn't really consider at the time. So uh, they took me into the room, did the anesthesia. Again, no doctor. I don't know who the doctor was. I don't know if there was a doctor. You had people in nurse outfits. I'm 97.8% sure they weren't nurses. Come in, did the anesthesia injections in my head. You had Arab translators walking around. So these guys are translators because these Turks in that clinic can't speak English. They're walking around talking rubbish. They come, they talk to you. They don't understand any medical medical terms. They don't know what's going on themselves, but they're just there apparently to comfort you and uh, to, be a, to be a translator for you. So they're milling around in the room. They do the injections, blah, blah, blah. My head starts to numb. Okay, and then the fun starts. So they start doing the incisions into my head. So again, doctors should be doing the incisions. You need a real reputable doctor to be doing the incisions. This is the most important step of a hair transplant, but I didn't have that. There were two teenage girls, probably around 18, 19, 20, 21. And um, they didn't speak English. There were two of them. They were doing the incisions. The whole time they stank of bio they were gossiping the whole time like this let's get this real this is a life-changing surgery it is life-changing because if you get it right it's going to be life-changing for you if you get it wrong 
it's going to be life changing for you because you're going to have to live with the result every day and look in the mirror and go out and face the world with a botched hairline or a botched donor area. So these girls were sitting there. They were gossiping. They were talking. And I'm thinking, listen, if you're trying to do a job on me, like I, like I really don't want you to be distracted and talking and laughing and all of this nonsense. Obviously, you want them to be in a good mood because they're doing a job on you. You don't want them to be in a bad mood. But you don't want them to be sitting there talking and bantering. And all the, all the while, you've got these translators coming in, flirting with these girls, talking rubbish with them in Turkish. Or I don't understand what's going on. And distracting them. Now, these girls, again, were 100% not nurses. They're what we call technicians. You can get good technicians. You can get bad technicians. God knows how much training these girls had. God knows some people, apparently, you can be a taxi driver and you can go and get trained as a technician in some of these hair mills in Turkey. So, um, so yeah, it was garbage. What they were doing um, was not professional at all. People walking in and out the room. The room was quite unhygienic in and of itself. Very, like, unsterile conditions. What you'd expect from an operating room because it is an operation. There's a real risk of bleeding there's a real risk of getting an infection from unsanitary conditions because they're making holes in your head so if any bacteria gets in there you get a serious infection so it really really was not a great experience it lasted about eight hours i mean no hair transplant is going to be very comfortable is it they're all going to be a bit uncomfortable so it was about eight hours but um they gave me food in between can't remember what the food was but yeah i was a bit I was a bit wary because these were clearly not professional people who were doing my transplant. But I thought, you know what? They've got a great reputation. They're obviously doing something right. They're getting all these people coming to them. So I thought, no problem. Cool. So anyway, the next day, uh, not the next day, sorry. So they took me back to the hotel. Head was bleeding. They gave me, they uh, sprayed my head with saline solution, kept spraying it, took me back to the hotel and it was really uncomfortable, obviously, to sleep that night because my donor area was bandaged up and or my whole head was quite painful, to be honest. Um, the pillow was a bit bloody, but hey, it's a hair transplant. This stuff happens, so I'm not going to knock anybody for that. Anyway, the next day, you need to come back in to the clinic. They need to clean it, have a look at it, blah, blah. So again, you go there, you get picked up. There's about five to ten other guys waiting around. And... Um, and yeah, they, they sprayed it, they they cleaned it up, they came and said, oh, great job, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they gave me some shampoos to take and explained the aftercare process, which was pretty much fine, no problem on that front. So I uh, said my goodbyes, and then I went back to the hotel room. Then I started, so now the blood was a bit, it was gone. Not gone, but it was cleaned up a little bit. So now I could see the graphs a bit more clearly. So I had a look at them and yeah, when I looked at the graphs in the mirror, I was like, the graphs that they've implanted, I was, uh, it was a bit, bit weird. I could see on my hairline, especially on the right side, I could see some individual graphs just floating in front of my hairline. I could see the hairline was slanted a bit, which isn't a problem because you don't always want a purely symmetrical hairline. You can have an asymmetrical hairline because in nature, hairlines are generally asymmetrical. So that's no problem. I could see a few holes above my temples. Um, so it looked like they hadn't grafted much there at all. And the hairline just basically looked pluggy. So the term is pluggy. It looked like there were gaps in between. Um, it didn't look didn't look seamless at all. So I was a bit worried, but again, I kind of just held it down and thought, you know what, these are professionals, they know exactly what they're doing, no problem. And then the swelling started, and the, <laughs> the swelling was crazy, the swelling was absolutely crazy. Um, it started in the hotel room, and the next morning, I, when I woke up to get my flight back home, wow, the swelling had, I looked like Quasimodo, honestly, <laughs> the swelling on my forehead and on my face was crazy. I looked like a monster. So, um, and that is a criticism I'll give them. So maybe I am prone to swelling. I think my skin was probably prone to swelling, but they did nothing to try and mitigate that at all. Whereas 
good hair transplant doctors do have procedures to try and mitigate swelling. And I think the fact that they took 5,000 grafts in one session, which is generally a no-no unless you're really skilled, um, did contribute to that huge swelling. So that wasn't good as well. The swelling was really bad. When I got back to London, like it took about 10 days to go fully down and I had two black eyes left at the end of it. So anyway, got back to London and the first thing my brother said to me is... Um, there was the bandage was off by this point. He said, your donor area looks looks like they've taken too much. So I looked at it, took a picture of it, went online. And uh, lo and behold, I saw a lot of other stories where it looked like the donor area had been over harvested. So over harvesting is when they take too many hairs from the donor area, generally on the back of your head. So that will leave you with a lot of holes in your hair. Where if people, if you cut your hair short, people will be able to see that something has happened, that you've had some kind of procedure. So that was worrying as well. And then about, so I waited, I waited. I didn't complain to the clinic or anything. So I waited. Generally, it takes about three months. So the hair will fall out. The hairs that they've implanted fall out. And then they're going to come back after three months. They fall out and then they come back. And that's when the real growth starts happening. So I waited and um, after about three months, man, so my hairline had come in. It was very pluggy, like I said. There were multiple hair grafts in there. So in the hairline, you're only really supposed to use singles, single hairs. But these had multiple hairs in them. So the hairline looked really thick and pluggy. It looked weird, it looked unnatural. And then behind the hairline on the corners, I had big holes in my hair. So where I saw that they didn't implant grafts on the day after the operation, barely any hair had grown in there after three months because they didn't, either they didn't implant or the grafts didn't survive. I'm not 100% sure, but I have big holes above the hairline in the corners. So I look weird. I would walk around. I'd have hair in my hairline and I'd have two holes in the corners. They look like horns. <laughs> yeah. And at that time, I was keeping my hair somewhat short. And it was just obvious that people would see me and I'd look at them, look them in the eye and their hair's going up to my, their eyes are going up to my head, to my hairline. I could see their eyes flickering towards my hairline. And it really, really, really knocked my confidence. I'm not going to lie to you because it looked weird. My donor area looked very weird. Have a massive scar there, basically like a box scar. So I'm while I'm, while this video is going, you'll be able to see pictures. I'm not looking at them right now. Or well, in fact, let me bring them up. But yeah, big scar on my hairline. Um, you can see the outline of that scar. And it looks like something has happened. You can tell that something has happened. It looks so weird. So anyway, I went, I messaged Ashley Tarjan. And there was one woman who was the one who gave me like the aftercare tips and was kind of like the coordinator for them. She answered the message. And I said, look, what have you done? You've destroyed my hair. You've destroyed my donor area. Like, what's going on here? I need some money back. And by the way, after the operation, I don't know what they do now, but they gave me a certificate, a quote unquote guarantee of their work. And I can upload that certificate as well. Guarantee of their work. Um, but that guarantee doesn't mean F all. Because the woman, I was telling her, listen, you've destroyed my hair. She kept saying, oh, oh, yeah, 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 it will grow back in a couple months. Give it some time. We'll see. I'm sure it will grow back. A couple months went by. I still I messaged back. Oh, oh, it will grow back. And then finally I had enough at about six months. I just said, she's destroyed my hair. I want a refund. Now, a refund ain't going to fix my hair by itself. But at the very least, if I get a refund, I can go and try and seek some form of repair. Either I can go and do SMP or I can do another transplant. I can do something. At least I don't feel like they took my money and destroyed my hair. At least I've got one of the two, yeah? But they didn't do it. They kept fobbing me off. Oh, 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 give it some time. And eventually I just got so frustrated I'd had enough. They wouldn't give me a refund. Kept fobbing me off. So I left, went and left some bad reviews on their Google. So I left one initially. I'm sure you can find it if you look hard enough for it. And... um they replied to the review saying 
that they couldn't find me on their database and I wasn't a customer, which was clearly, clearly rubbish. And then straight after that review, 10 new positive reviews popped up the next day. Clearly, they've got people working for them, writing fake reviews because the English is garbage. I don't know if they're Chinese or Turkish, but they've got a whole team making fake reviews to drown out the negative ones. And there are many negative ones with exactly the same concerns as I had. So I left a negative review. Then I left another negative review. And um, this time they said, this time in the reply, they accused me of being a former employee <laughs> and uh, apparently stealing their uh, patient's details or stuff like that. And they're going to give a lawsuit, put a lawsuit against me or something like that. So they're clearly crooks. They wouldn't acknowledge what they did to me. They butchered my hair. They wouldn't acknowledge it. They completely destroyed my hair. Okay, and um, it really knocked my confidence. Like I said, like I've always, I've never been somebody who who is very vain, but when you're walking around with a weird recipient area and holes in your hair and a big patch at the back of your hair, it will knock your confidence. When people are talking to you, you don't want to look at them because you think they're looking at your hair. So anyway, I eventually decided, you know what? I'm going to just shave it all off. And I got SMP. So SMP is scalp micropigmentation. And uh, it can be a reasonable way to cover up scarring and that kind of thing. I mean, it looked okay, but I don't like shaving my head every day. And you have to keep getting touch-ups of scalp micropigmentation. Because it can wear off after a couple years. And as well, it's not perfect. Like up close, you'll be able to see the hair textures are different and things like that. Especially because Astley Tarjan implanted so many like where they implanted the grafts is clearly different from my native hair so um so yeah it wasn't perfect did that for a while did that for maybe a year and a bit eventually i had enough i thought you know what i need to get this hair sorted i can't i don't want to think about my hair every day i just want to have a hair normal hair and get on with my business so um so yeah i started looking started researching um went on some forums there's a really good forum hair restoration network and uh, i found the forum they've got a list of recommended doctors i really was diligent about it this time was really like i proper did my research and i looked and i found a doctor and hopefully he's going to be fixing the scarring on the back of my head and he's going to be fixing the recipient area as well I mean, God willing, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if it will work 100%, but he's got a very good reputation for repairing hair, especially after botches like these. So yeah, so that hopefully that will be happening next month. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with the channel, whether I'm going to be continuing it, but I would depends on the feedback I get. But yeah, my advice, stay away from crooks and butchers like Ashley Tarjan. I, I, the worst part is when you Google, when you put the Ashley Tarjan name in YouTube, you see hundreds of these guys from America, especially black guys who are talking as if Ashley Tarjan are a specialist in Afro hair and they're going to get their transplants from Ashley Tarjan. I would urge you to be very, very careful from going to these people. They will butcher your hair and they don't give a damn. You buy cheap you're going to have to pay for it down the road. Do not go for cheap when it comes to your transplant because they don't care if they over-harvest your donor area. They don't care if the result is natural. They're a hair mill. They operate on numbers. They need hundreds of people every week or month to come through their doors. They're not focused on quality care of the patient. Do not go to these butchers. The woman's a crook. She's not a doctor. There's no legal protection in turkey if they do destroy your hair at all they don't give a damn they don't even speak english barely and i see i looked them up recently on youtube they've got they've really improved their kind of social media game you've got this this very effeminate looking um fellow dancing on camera and all of this rubbish don't be fooled by this garbage don't be fooled by this garbage. You want to go to a serious clinic, not some idiot dancing on camera and acting like he's some bad man. <laughs> All the while he's butchering your hair. Take the lessons from what I've told you. And there will probably be Ashley Tarjan trolls in the comments, I'm sure. 
and paid shills. Trust me on this. If you've got any stories yourself of a botched hair transplant, Ashley Tarjan, send them to me. Send me your story. I'll put I'll put an email in here. I'll make an email and you can send it to me. Or anywhere, in any clinic, send me your stories. Because there is hope. You can get it fixed down the road. But the most important thing is do your research in the first place so you don't have to go down this road. Anyway, I hope that helps. And um, yeah, send me comment like this video let's get some engagement and let's get these crooks out of business so tip